Hello everyone, I'm Ben Coleman, one of your many hosts here at the Florida Aviation Network. We're coming to you live and in the clear from the Florida Air Museum. Aerospace Center for Excellence is what Light Slimhilt likes to call this establishment. And uh, 45th annual Sun and Fun International Fly-In and Expo. We're so proud to have uh, so many manufacturers, distributors, uh, vendors, suppliers, guests, people of all ages here that enjoy the freedom of flight, aviation, and all the passion and energy involved with this industry. And uh, speaking of energy, we happen to have a guy here with uh, more energy than I have ever seen in one spot at one time walking on two feet. Kermit Weeks. Dan, good to see you. Kermit, tell us a little bit about what's going on in Fantasy of Flight. Oh wow, all sorts of stuff. Um, I'm out here selling a little bit of my children's books. I got another one at the printer, so I'll be selling that up at Oshkosh. Uh, I've been working on the design and development of uh, Fantasy of Flight Act 3. You know, as we know, we closed about four or five years ago. Uh, we've got just a little seasonal museum open to kind of keep the gift shop open and keep our toe in the water for some of the airplane enthusiasts to come out and see the airplanes. But I've been working with some uh, great uh, theme park design guys. My right-hand guy, was uh, his name was Bob Ward. He was the original uh, lead designer for all the Universal Studios parks, and he was there when they began the... Uh, what uh, Universal was going to become eventually trying to do their, you know, uh, backlot movie tour in Burbank, California. He was here at the beginning of uh, Universal Studios in Orlando. And uh, he and I uh, have kind of got a past connection, like way in the past. And uh, we reconnected. In a, in, a, in a different world. In a different world, okay, yes. Okay, got it. And uh, basically we reconnected and uh, uh, he's since introduced me to some great global theme park guys in uh, uh, Orlando, they're all over the world. They love my concept. It's very unique. It's really kind of almost the opposite of the existing theme park industry, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, the difference is, you know, the existing industry is for the masses. It's about escaping from reality. Walt's segue was we were coming out of World War II in Korea, and everybody wanted to forget all that and, you know, have, have, have a leave it to beaver mm -hmm. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so, um, which was great, and Walt created something that I believe I'm going to be able to stand on his shoulders, create something uh, completely different. Uh, my product's going to be more about the individual. It's going to be more about engaging reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to use uh, uh, the metaphor of flight, not so much airplanes and aviation, mm -hmm. but the mm -hmm. metaphor of flight, you know, reaching beyond ourselves, push on our boundaries, freedom, in a way that touches people not only in the aviation industry, but more importantly, people outside the aviation industry. You know, in this business, uh, it can be pretty tough, you know, because there's this many of us that like airplanes and we're all on the center front <laughs> airfield right now. And the rest of the world doesn't realize what we're doing. So I'm trying to create something that goes after the rest of the world. Kermit, uh, and I explained to folks that we are a sliver of the pie chart uh, as far as the totality of the world goes. And, and that's, for the most part, it's our own darn fault because we talk to each other. We need to go out and talk to others about... I, I believe aviation has an untapped potential that I hope to take advantage of. And there's a lot of people out there that are in other unique, eclectic organizations. Can I correct you? Yeah. You are taking advantage of it. Uh, well, you don't try it. You're doing it. <laughs> and that, and that's, well, that's a compliment. Well wait, well, wait till I eventually deliver what I hope to deliver. And you know, it, it's like, you know, I was in the aviation biz museum business for 30 years, lost my butt. And uh, basically, the bottom line is if you've got a business product that people are, most people aren't willing to pay for, you've got a business product most people don't want, mm -hmm. okay? And I think uh, everybody in aviation can agree, especially in the museum business, you know, we, we preach to the choir, we build icons of what we think is cool, mm -hmm. we force feed people information we think they ought to know. And yeah, I, I want to do it in a little bit different way. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to teach history. I'm going to use history to teach you about yourself. So you've got to bring the past into the present to make it relevant, especially to this generation. Kermit, you're familiar with the uh, the evolution photograph of you know chimp and chimp gets yeah, taller and yeah, yeah. carrying a briefcase and then it goes up to a man in a suit. I can see it going one other level, and I see you at the end of the end of that man in the suit. <laughs> the, the evolution of mankind, and uh, it's like you have been, and I've always admired your 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 charisma and dedication to the journey. Life is a journey. 
That's really what it's all about. You know, Fantasy of Flight, uh, we have a mission statement, it's Light That Spark Within. Mm -hmm. And it's a metaphor for basically potential, infinite potential, coming into this world of light. So when we mean that, Light That Spark Within, a Fantasy of Flight, it's you expressing that mm -hmm. potential, what I believe what you truly are, and bringing it into this world and expressing it in your own unique way. I don't want to tell anybody anything at the future of Fantasy of Flight. I want people to self-discover and self-transform themselves for themselves, sure. not about aviation and airplanes, but about this metaphor of flight, which I defy you to come up with a more profound metaphor for pushing our boundaries, reaching mm -hmm. beyond ourselves, mm -hmm. and freedom than flight. And it's not only on this earth, it's on many other earths and other worlds and the universe. And uh, does that sound familiar? <laughs> it, well, yeah, re you know, the reality is, um, I think, uh, if you think about it, 100,000 years ago, humanity was drawn beyond itself. Would you agree? I agree. Today we are. In a million years, we still would be. Yep. Think about it. If you're a self-aware life form in any reality, we're mm -hmm. drawn beyond ourselves. I believe that's what this journey is all about. And it's basically what we truly are, potential, trying to understand what we are. And the only way we can do that mm -hmm. is to go from a limited perspective and go beyond what we perceive ourselves to be. That to me is what the journey is all about. I agree with you. And uh, Kermit, I'm gonna give the guys in the truck just a heart attack. <laughs> we come into this world naked, don't we? We do. We all come in the same way. Yeah. But there's one thing that we have a decision to make of what we do when we're naked and where we do it. There we where go. Where would you do something naked? Oh my God, are you talking about my rum? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, I was literally laying on a beach in the grill Jamaica with my future wife and the words to a song came to me. This is the way my world works, you know, and I think everybody at some level has similar instances. And I literally wrote this song on a beach mm -hmm. in the grill. <laughs> and uh, eventually I went home and I recorded it in a studio and mm -hmm. I've always loved drinking rum and orange juice. I created my own rum. Uh, five miles south of me is a distillery in Auburndale. Mm -hmm. uh, the name of the song, the name of the rum is Naked in Jamaica. You can buy it locally here at Tucker's Southside in Lakeland or at Fantasy of Flight. We sell it in the gift shop. I've got mm -hmm. a liquor license just to sell my own private label. Um, but you know, it's interesting, it actually, uh, it comes under the umbrella. It, 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 it's a funny way of delivering a very profound message. Mm -hmm. And it comes under the umbrella of what I'm trying to do. It's the only alcohol product on the planet. I've got a couple of gold medals and silver for it mm -hmm. at some of the rum shows, uh, alcohol shows. And uh, it's the only song that, uh, pro alcohol product that has a song named after it. Mm -hmm. It has a drink named after it, which is a rum and orange juice. I've always loved drinking rum and orange juice, but you can't find a rum that mixes with orange juice. Think about it, True. every tropical drink is rum and fruit juice. Yeah, yeah. And so basically uh, there's a drink named after it, there's a song named after it, and on the back of it, there's a message in the bottle. And it's not about wild and crazy and taking your clothes off. It's no. seeing clothing as a metaphor for how we don't express our true self to the world. Mm -hmm. So while you're sipping my naked in Jamaica rum, I want you to ponder how you're limiting yourself and covering yourself with false pretenses and not expressing your true self to the world. So I, anyway. I, I must admit, I am a little dis disappointed. Uh, after uh, Melody and I went through our second case of naked in Jamaica. Oh, that's a great testimonial. Um, we turned in, this was around Christmas time, yeah. and I sent you uh, the Naked Santa. Oh, you did, oh my God. That is awesome. Yeah, so you need to come up with your own naked drink. He sent me one. My rum and eggnog is off the chart to die for, thanks to Ben. The, the Naked Santa. That's, the Naked Santa, that's awesome. That's my pleasure. Yeah, come up with your own naked drink. <laughs> the, uh, but now, Kermit, you know that we here at the Florida Aviation Network being run by volunteers with volunteers. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're here about aviation safety, and uh, we need to put a plug in there about why this industry is so dynamic and wonderful and can be tragic and, and just uh, terrible. Boy, look at the statistics on the road, and that's a two-dimensional world, you know, and then all of a sudden you take it to a three-dimensional yeah. world, and you got to think in three-dimensional safety, you yeah. know. It's uh, very important. We try and do everything we can at Fantasy of Flight to be as safe as possible, and uh, I hope to do more flying. and. Uh, hope to offer rides and some vintage airplanes at some point and you know we don't want to hurt anybody or any airplanes. You, you have a, uh, a tremendous safety, safety record there now and I remember many many years ago you probably don't remember when SMS first came out and I was talking to you about well Kermit what do you do for safety? Jack McCloy. <laughs> what, but no what, what method do you what system do you hope well, it's, it's, it's Jack McCloy. <laughs> so remember that? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, but Believe I, it or not, Jack is back. Jack is back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack, yeah. you know we're neighbors. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm proud to, to keep Up there in the green there. swamp. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, the aerodrome itself. But the, uh, do you remember seeing a picture of that biplane in a tree? The only tree in the middle of a field. Yes. yes. I own that, Jenny. You. I own, that's a Curtis Jenny. I yeah. own that airplane. It's a fancy I'll be airplane. I didn't it's know a that. project right now. It's, yeah. it's in a box. Or uh, no, it's just in my storage facility. The Curtis Jenny in the tree that's crashed with the wing broken off, and it says something about hazardous, blah, blah, something. Aviation in itself is not dangerous. Yes. However, <laughs> to a higher degree than the sea, is terribly unforgiving of any incapacitance, uh, negligence, or complacency. This guy used to work for the FAA. I'm just trying to tell you. Can you tell? <laughs> But, uh, but actually, it, it's a very true statement. That is circa, yeah. circa 1931. And yeah. that was from a, uh, a surveyor in the UK came up with huh. that. And we, we uh, attribute that to him. A lot of people oh, use it. Oh, I'll be darned. But the, uh, and the guy that w put it in the tree broke his leg. He came I'll out of the airplane. Darned. Oh, my gosh. Uh, he didn't kill him. But huh. uh, he, he got out of the tree with a broken leg. And uh, that's about all we know of it. Unbelievable. But, well, but the like, airplane's up the road. i got to come see it. Yeah, got to come yeah. see it? For sure. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the safety thread here uh, we've had so far at uh, the 45th annual uh, a Baron dropped a nose gear went down its nose. Uh, we have a uh, light sport that went up on its tail uh, up on the nose, brought mm -hmm. the tail up, and we had a uh, L39 had a flat tire. Uh, on, on that's rollout. pretty good. So I mean, unfortunately, we're not going to see any tornadoes come through. No tornadoes or year. fire. Or fire. Or fire. Oh, that's right. Oh, Those were cars. Yeah, somebody parked a car out in the uh, out in the out in the parking lot, and it, the, the grass was a little higher and yeah. dry. And man, what a mess that made. We oh were about gosh. ready to evacuate. We uh, we all learn, you know. Life presents opportunities to learn. It's not just aviation. That's I mean, oh my gosh, just walking through life is. A, it's a journey. It is. <laughs> Tell me about your children's books. I know you've had one. Um, you're working on the second or the third. Well, I've got uh, I've got three out so far, and I have one at the printer. The first two were aviation characters with mm -hmm. airplane characters that I've got. The third one was Austin the Ostrich, which is like my park icon. If I was Walt, it would mm -hmm. be my Mickey Mouse. Uh, I've been that's going to be actually a whole series of thirteen books. Mm -hmm. I've kind of story arced the series. I had to know how it was going to end. Uh, finished the first book and I've developed characters that I've already developed and mm. I've done a little bit of writing. So my next Austin book will be book two um, and I've got another uh, uh, airplane book that's at the printer right now. I'll have it at Osh uh, Oshkosh for sure. Mm -hmm. It's called Overnight Success and trust me this book has taken me so long and the main meaning of the book is there are no overnight successes. <laughs> oh my gosh and I've learned the hard way on this one. Hard work, hard work, a lot of hard work. Yeah, a lot of hard work. And uh, Kermit, at Aero Television, you know Brad Irwin? Yeah. We have a slot dedicated for the Fantasy Flight Channel. Really awesome, good, good, On good, Aero good. Television. Good. And uh, between the Wizard of Orlampa the Kermie Cam, and uh, you, I think you're going to oh, have My a... YouTube channel is going great. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, going great. I think we just broke 80,000 subscribers. It's climbing. I think as soon as we get to 100,000, YouTube dedicates somebody to us to help us, you know, go even more. So they like what we do. Uh, and, you know, we eventually, a couple of years ago, we started doing the advertising mm -hmm. because everybody was pretty much used to it. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, at some point, it's, my channel's going to pay for itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be a while before I gain all that, you know, pre-roll in front of it. But uh, people, I've had so many people come up to me saying, hey, we love the Kermie Cams, love your, uh, you, know, you know, what you're putting out mm -hmm. there and stuff. And so... Uh, I appreciate well, that. But, but Brad and I have been watching, and uh, we, uh, we, you, it's not that you're ahead of us, it's that we're just behind you, <laughs> uh, if that's a little different way to twist look at it. But, but we are going to all get there, and uh, it's, it's just all having fun and, and enjoying life. Yeah, and, well, good. And, uh, is the term follow your energy? Uh, follow the energies of life, and it will lead you to your destiny. Uh, it's all about following okay. the energies, and yeah. what I mean by that, it's the way I live life. You know, the, to me, there's like this little lower self aspect, there's a higher self aspect, whatever you want to call it. And those little things that you resonate with in life, it's almost like a clue. There's like an aspect of yourself saying, come this way. Mm -hmm. And I've learned to follow that. And, uh, and when I do, the world just unfolds before me, mm -hmm. you know. And, 
anyway, it's, uh, it, that's the way I've learned to live life. So I uh, ran across an old friend, Ron Bucarelli. I don't know if you know Ron. Name's kind of familiar. Uh, corporate pilot, but he uh, owned Precious Metal. Okay. He sold Precious Metal at yeah, the time. Okay. But well, Ron, I knew when Whittington owned it. Yeah, Whittington. Yeah. You, knew, you knew Precious when Whittington was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Don and Bill. Yeah. And, oh, my God. Check up on Don. He had a little thing that you okay. needed to check up on him. Uh, the... The, the the airplane itself is is one thing, but but Ron at his stage of life, uh, he's taken on another Mustang project. Oh my God! At home. Oh really? And he's he's soaking up Mustang parts wherever he can find them. Yeah. He wants to build another airplane. Oh, I guess. Yeah. And he said, "But Ben, I'm getting long in tooth, man." I said, "Ron, we all are." But oh my gosh! I said, "Pick out pick out somebody. Pick out one of these whippersnappers around here. Yeah. That you see something special in them, and adopt them." Uh, take them under your wing, and if they want to dedicate the time and the energy toward uh, pursuing a dream, man, there you go. That, that that's you're going to pay, pay it, it forward. forward. Yeah, great. So we uh, we had a really good chat, and it's it's just good to see. Maybe that's one of the things about these conventions, guys and gals, that is good for. Well, it's not so much coming here to buy stuff. Or, or see the new things, but you see it's people. It's about the people. It's the all about people, the people. that yeah. you, you haven't seen in five yeah. or ten or fifteen years. And uh, what's really fun is to come across somebody. I know you from somewhere, <laughs> and you and you and you hog it out to the point where you uh, you go back sometimes twenty five thirty oh my years. God. And you see people out of context, and I know I know them, but I don't know from where. We had an award recipient here for the uh, maintenance technician of the year award, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I know you, and it says, I know you. <laughs> and so it was a, kind of a little game, but by golly, he was a, a mechanic when he came out of the Navy up in Orlando for Orlando Aircraft Services, and I was with FISDO at the time. Uh -huh. And man, he was uh, whip. I mean, you talking about thin, trim. I mean, he was still in his, in his Navy buff, and uh, things had changed. <laughs> We had both been bodybuilding, if oh you will. Oh my gosh! And uh, Man, I, I almost I, didn't recognize him. I'm an him. official senior citizen, Kermit the little kid. I'm like, oh my god! I have some shirts over at my place. I'm selling. I don't know if I should promote them on the deal here, but well, we promoted Naked Rum. Fokker triplane on the front with a caveat that says "Old Mother and Little." Okay, I'm just saying. So come over to my booth and we'll sell you read. one. I'm not going to read between those lines, but uh, <laughs> but it is fine that we uh, that we come across folks and and importantly we get the opportunity to make new friends for and, sure uh, yeah and and that's and I always uh, I'm out walking around and I'm not nearly as popular as you but people see me that know me that I don't know them uh, yeah and I try yeah. to figure out a way to okay how am I going to tag this person and how I'm going to remember them the next time I find them. Well, I, I love sitting there and talking to the people and the, the little kids. I don't care how high they are. Yeah. I sit there and I explain things to them like they're an adult, you know, because mm -hmm. at some level they get it, okay, sure. you know? And uh, anyway, it's been great. It's all about the people, I think. And in, in, uh, in more ways than one, it really is. And this, uh, this museum is, uh, is a great uh, testimony of, there's a lot of neat stuff here. Howard Hughes has got his uh, memorabilia at the end. And, oh, I got some Howard Hughes memorabilia. Did you? Uh, well, Howie's looking at me right there, right there, up there. Right there. And he's still looking at us. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Tom Riley made it here. I saw the tail. Oh, I will the, go of, check of that twin, out. Twin uh, Mustang. Good. I got uh, two, but they're not together. If, well, we could fix that. Yeah, okay. But yeah. you know the ironic thing about that twin Mustang? He says, Ben, there, there's maybe two parts that are similar to a, yeah. a single Mustang. It's it's uncanny, but. Uh, he got his type in it yesterday Good. and uh, brought it down. Uh, and I, I look forward to going and leaving some fingerprints on it. Good. But it's, uh, look forward to seeing it, that. it's a testimony of just uh, determination, willpower, some funding. But, but actually, it's the, the vision for seeing what something is going to look like at the end and what it's going to take from this position to get to this position. But let me tell you something. Put your hands apart. That's the spark. Light that spark within. Figure out what you love to do. That's your dream. You got to follow yeah. it. But it's all about the dashed lines in the middle. And exactly. That's filling in the blanks. The dot. Follow the dotted lines. It's all about the journey. All right, Kermit. We're going to wind this one down because uh, you probably got some place you need to be. I need to go sell some books. Come out and see me. Let's go sell some books and drink some rum. Uh, naked in Jamaica rum. All right. Let's go for it. <laughs> all right, folks. We're going to wind this one up. It's been a pleasure to talk with Kermit again, as usual. And I'm Ben Coleman, one of your many hosts here at the Florida Aviation Network. We'll see you next interview.